Foundation Intermediate Level 1, Lesson Number 3. This is assuming you've already finished Lessons 1 and 2 and you're ready to give this one a shot. Those first two lessons could have taken you anywhere between two and five weeks, and this particular lesson could take you anywhere between two and, two and three or four weeks itself. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. The reading exercises in this one are a little bit harder. Uh, so don't, don't feel like you have to go really fast. You don't even have to use your metronome at first. Uh, you'll find out in the middle somewhere I have to switch from a conventional metronome to my smartphone metronome app. I'll show you how to do that. Um, I have also incorporated uh, some pedaling as usual. Uh, sometimes I tell you to change a pedal, sometimes not. You're going to be uh, eventually learning how to just change pedal uh, when you're supposed to. And uh, we're working on the Sonatina in C, maybe adding a little bit of metronome to help you work on some tempo there. So I hope you enjoy practicing this one. Remember to uh, relax your shoulders and your arms when you play the piano and try to enjoy yourself and have a good time. All right. So for this lesson, at the beginning here, you'll see the first thing on your list as usual is the sacbe. And um, you are, of course, welcome to play as many of these as you want to each day. I encourage it, but uh, for, the, for the sake of making the video short, I'm just going to play um, G major because our reading exercises are in the key of G this week. So I'm going to turn the metronome on. How about we do a 96? And I'm going to go nice and uh, steady and try to make it sound musical while making sure the notes lead to each other. jump up an octave for the cadence because I think it's a little bit muddy down here. We'll do um, both hands at the same time. And then we're going to do burlesque, first with Alberti bass. Sakba in the key of G. Good luck with that. All right, so the next thing on your list for the lesson three practice guide is, of course, the major and minor triads. And still, we're doing them by the image, but I'm going to show you how, after hopefully uh, a week or two of working on them, by this time maybe three weeks, who knows, you're getting pretty good at them. You should be able to do them uh, maybe without even looking at the list. I'm going to go through them fairly quickly, and hopefully you'll try to copy the way I'm doing it. The white, white, white major triads are C major, F major, and G major. The white, black, white major triads are D major, E major, and A major. The black, white, black major triads are D flat major, E flat major, and A flat major. The black, black, black major triad is G flat major. The black, white, white major triad is E flat major. The white, black, black major triad is B major. Now let's do the minor triads. The white, white, white minor triads are D minor, E minor, and A minor. The white, black, white major uh, minor triads are C minor, F minor, and G minor. 
the black, white, black minor triads are C sharp minor, F sharp minor, and G sharp minor. The black, black, black minor triad is E flat minor. The black, black, white minor triad is B flat minor. And the white, white, black minor triad is B minor. Those are your major and minor triads by image. Good luck with that. All right, so the first reading exercise this week is flitting in G. I'm going to work phrase by phrase every single line. Um, you'll notice that when you get to the bottom line, there's a repeat. And I'm going to repeat back to here. And then I'm going to go to the coda. Uh, evidently, when I wrote this out on a computer, and I've already printed them all up, um, I forgot to write an important thing, which is called DC Alcoda. So you're going to write that in because I forgot to. And what that means is DC means go back to the beginning, which is kind of the repeat sign, and then jump to the coda, the end. Okay, this is how I should have done it without, even without the repeat signs, I could have done that. But I made a mistake. So anyway, hopefully you'll catch that. I'm going to go ahead and go phrase by phrase, and then I'll do the coda as well. I'll just do each line once with the right hand, once with the left, and then both. And then I'll show you what it sounds like up in the range of 72 to 120. We'll probably start pretty slow. Um, when you're learning it, you might not even need to start with a metronome, but I'm going to put it on so you can hear the beat. And I'm going to start it at 56. You can start even slower and not even use the metronome, like I said. But let's, here we go, from the beginning. The first line, right hand pinky, is on G. I want you to really watch the fingerings on this piece. And there's an occasional staccato and a pedal that you got to look out for. Okay, here we go, right hand by itself. One, two, and three, and one. Two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, one. And that's the right hand on the first line. Once you get good at that, which might take many tries, then it's the left hand's turn. One, two and three and one, two and three. Remember, I'm counting out loud, so you should be counting out loud. I'm just kind of showing you how it goes. Once you get good at the left hand, both hands. Still counting and with your eyes glued to the music. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, one. And that is the first line. Now I'm going to go on to the second line. After you've done three perfect on the first line, you're ready for it. Right hand starts the same way on this line. It goes one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, one. So watch those fingerings carefully. Get the right hand learned. Left hand starts with a two on G. One, two, and three, and one. Two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, one. And that's all the left hand does. Once you get good at that, put them together. One, two, and three. I did it wrong. Right hand holds, left hand staccatos. That was dumb. But anyway, hopefully you'll get three perfects like that, um, doing it correctly on the first note of the next line. After you get your three perfects, of course, put those two lines together. But I'm going to go ahead and do the third line. Right hand, fifth finger on B. One and two and three. pedal you'll notice comes into that note. So when you're practicing this part, practice bringing in the pedal. Right hand, after you get that memorized, I'm not memorized, you don't have to memorize these pieces, but once you get good at it, left hand's turn. One and two and three and one and two and three. One and two and three and one, two, three, pedal. Okay, now once you get good at that, it's both hands. One, Pedal. All right. 
right? And once you get go to the third line, of course, put all three lines together that you know so far. Hopefully you've gotten at least three perfect on each line. But now we're gonna work on the fourth line, which starts at measure 13. The right hand thumb is on the F sharp and the pedal is down. One and two and three. One change pedal, two and three. Change pedal, two, three. One, two, back to the beginning, one. Two and three and one. And of course this time you'll notice that because of that transition where I had to do the jump from here back to this, I decided to overlap by a whole measure. And of course there are certain places where it's good to do that so you get transitions like that. That's where that's one place where I would do it. So make your right hand play that far and get good at it. And once you're good at that, left hand's turn. One and two and three and one, two and three. Now the pedal, even though even though it says the pedal should just hold to the end of this measure, hold it all the way up until you play the first note at the beginning, okay? So now I'm going to do both hands on that part. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, change pedal, two, three. Change pedal, two. Now hold the pedal while you move. One, two, and three. Now, of course, I overlapped a whole measure when I did both hands. I forgot to overlap that whole measure when I do just the left hand, but hopefully you got the gist of that. After you've practiced that fourth line so you got three perfect, of course, put it all together. And then there's just one line left to practice, which would be the last line of the piece, the coda. Um, we're going to go ahead and play the right hand by itself, starting at measure 17. One, two, and three, and one. Two, and three, and one, and two, and three. Two, three, off. Okay, now it's the left hand's turn after you get good at the right hand. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three. And that's the end. And now we're going to put them together. Once you get that left hand learned, put them together. One, two, three. Now I'm going to play through the whole thing at 72, so you can tell what it sounds like at the low end. It sounds like this. One, two, and three, and one. And I have to start over because I just goofed. I started with the second finger. Did you notice? I'm going to put the left hand fifth finger here. Somebody should be more careful. Here we go. One, two, and three, and one. Two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one. Two, three. here. One, two, and three. Change. One, two, and three. Change. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two. Now to the coda. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three. And that was at 72. I'm going to move it up to 120. My metronome seems to be running out of batteries. Hopefully you can kind of hear it. It's actually on. On two and three. So here it is a little bit faster. Hopefully you noticed how I repeated from uh, the, the end of the fourth line. The end of the fourth line all the way back to the beginning. And then just to here where it says jump to the coda, I jumped to the coda. So that's what I'm going to show you on this one. Here it is at the top speed. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three, one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, back to the beginning, one, two, and three, and one.
Dakota. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, three, off. And that is flitting in G. Good luck with that. Okay, so the next reading piece is very interesting. It's going to introduce you to a new style of playing that involves playing sixths with a smooth fingering. So you'll find that instead of playing a six with a one five like you're used to, you're going to play it with a one three, connecting to a one four, connecting to a one five. This is kind of an exercise in, in that type of fingering. And then of course it can go the other direction too. You'll find one really stretchy one, two five, going to a one four, one three. So really watch the fingerings on this. Your fingers will be stretched and challenged a little bit but go slow and relax your arm, you can handle it. The other thing is I wrote a uh, pedal marking just for the first line and then I wrote pedal simile because I got tired of doing the same. Uh, anytime you see pedal simile, it means keep pedaling the same way. So I wouldn't have to write the pedaling out for the whole piece. Essentially you're changing on beat one and beat three. Every once in a while I will yell out change and you'll know that the pedal is supposed to change. I don't do it all the time, but I just try to remind you every once in a while. So that's the th thing you need to look out for on this piece and, and plus, I've uh, decided to go ahead and use uh, my my smartphone um, my smartphone metronome because, as you noticed on the last song, my conventional metronome needs a battery and it's dying. You could hardly hear it, so I'm gonna start using this one. You can go with your phone and, and uh, go online and get uh, any number of free metronome apps. I like this one. It's called Pro Metronome. It's really easy to use, but I'll still kind of try to dial into uh, the conventional metronome numbers because that's the that's what I use on your sheets. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the work at 48 just so you can hear a beat. As usual, you don't need to use a metronome at first until you get to know it a little bit, and then you can start working your way up. At the end, I'll show you the whole piece uh, between 63 and 92, so you'll hear what it's supposed to sound like. So anyway, we're going to start at the beginning on this one. Bring out your top note if you can, and to make sure you connect your fingers even though the pedal's down. Here we go. One and two and three. Change pedal and four. good at that right hand with the pedaling changing every beat one and three go ahead and go to the left hand you know the reason I'm counting all those ands is because the left hand is playing a lot of eighth notes one and two and three and four practice changing on your pinky and two and change and four and one and you get that left hand master and of course I think you'll probably be going a lot slower than that when you first start here we go I'm gonna do both hands one and two and three and four and 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 one that's the first line. Once you get three perfect on that, start on the second line. Right hand, same fingering, and the pedaling is still there, even though it's not drawn in. Remember, change pedal on one and three. One and two and change and four and one and two and change and four and change two change four change two change four. So I hope you watch that a lot and get those fingerings exactly the way they're written. Once you do that, left hand goes like this. One and two and change and four and change and two and change and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So there's a lot of intervals there. Work hard at trying not to look down at your hand for those stretches. See if you can train your hand how to do it without your eyes looking at the keys. You'll probably have to go a lot slower than that. But once you've mastered it, put them together. I mean, let me show you. I just on this one, I want to show you because I know how hard it is. Um, what a really nice slow playing of this would sound like. One and two and three and four 
and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay. So now you know when I put the metronome on, I have it like 48. 48 is pretty fast, so don't feel like you need to hit that number anytime soon. I just like to demonstrate them at these numbers so that you can kind of hear how they're going to flow. You should probably start a lot slower. Anyway, let me do that one more time. Second line, but up at 48, it goes like this. One and two and three. Oh, I goofed. One and two. Left hand goes down to F sharp. And four and one and two and three. So now that was the second line. And of course, once you get that learned, put it together with the first line. I'm going to move on to the third line, which starts to measure nine. Your number one, your number three, once again, start on the sixth. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Then you jump. So hopefully you're still changing your pedal on every beat one and every beat three. I'm going to play the left hand now. One and two and change and four and change and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And four and one. Okay, so now let's put them together. Right hand one three. Left hand. One and two and three and four and 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 one and okay. Now that is the third line. And once you've gotten three perfect there, Go ahead and play it with all the other lines, the first two lines, and then you're ready to work on the fourth line, which is measure 13. Right hand starts with that sixth. One and two and chain pedal and four and change and two, change again and four and one, change, two and three and four. And at the end, change two, but don't change on three, just hold. Okay? Then off. Once you've mastered that, left hand. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and getting softer and softer. One and two and three and four and one. And then I didn't tell you which finger. Whatever you want at the end. You don't have to change your pedal. Okay? Now I'm going to do both hands on the bottom line. It goes like this. One and two and how you finish this one. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump up to 63 so you can hear what the whole thing sounds like at sort of the low end of the range you should play that. It would go like this. One, two, and three, and four, and two, and three. You should be counting. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Sorry about that fingering.
in. That was at 63. Now let me play it up at 92. This is quite a bit faster, so don't feel like you've failed if, you've done, if you can't go this fast. But if you want to keep working on it to get it this fast, it might take a while. One, Sorry about that. <laughs> one and two and three and four and one, two and four. So I really goofed on the bottom line there. But um, I just was thinking, I have a couple spots in here where I would slow down. And I wrote them in. Poco retardando is one spot where you could slow down. And then a tempo means go ahead and go back to the regular speed. And I didn't indicate it here, but you could slow down a little bit at the end too. Okay, so I was just thinking, you know, the reason I goofed, I was kind of thinking about that. I wasn't paying attention, but anyway, let me play the last, oh, let's just play one more time without, without the metronome, so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. One and two and three, sorry about that note. Two and three. Slow down there, you can do that. Make it more musical. One, two, three, one, two, eight, three, one, two, eight, three, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, four. And that was Sunny Sixth and G. Good luck with that. All right, so this week. This lesson, lesson three, on your sonatina in C, we're going to go ahead and learn the top of the next page because you've already learned everything on the first page, hopefully. Um, we're going to practice these two lines. Um, because it's sort of an uh, unusual uh, arrangement on this one, we're going to do a four-measure stretch from measure 16 all the way up through the first note of measure 20, and then we'll practice measure 20 and 21 Going to the first notes here, we're probably going to overlap a little bit. But on this part, there's what we call a sequence, which is a repeating pattern of notes uh, that, that mean we don't need to chop this one into two measure plus two measure. I think you can handle all four. So let me kind of show you how I do this. Um, on this part, we're going to do measure 16. Hopefully you'll notice there's a B, a D, and a G. But if you play them all together, it forms a G major chord. And then... The next three notes play the same pattern, but the bottom note of the chord is the D. Your middle note is F, top note A. It's a, what we would call a D minor chord. So you can kind of memorize these chords. The first one is G. The next one would you call a D minor. Then the next one, the bottom note is B, and the middle note is D, top note F. So it's, that's the chord. And then on the next one, we're down to G. So we went from a G chord to a D minor, to what we would call B diminished, and then a G chord. And I just want to show you, kind of explain, this is this whole thing is based on this G chord with what they call a seventh added. So it's going to be a G7. In the key of C, that is the 5-7 chord. You're used to seeing your 5-7 like this, but if you put all the notes that we just played in there, you'll see that includes your 5-7. So anyway, I wanted you to see that you can memorize this just by chords, what I call blocking. Block the first chord, then the next measure, then the next measure, and then the next measure. And you might notice as you do that that your thumb is following the contour or the arpeggio of a G major chord. Okay, So these are different ways you can remember how to play this. And after you've done this a few times, gotten good at this, then playing the pattern's easy. You just got to remember it starts with the middle note, then the top note, then the bottom note. And you count for two beats, and then you move down to the next chord, middle note, top bottom, middle, top, bottom, middle, top, bottom. Okay, so that's how you memorize it. Now let's do it once counting. You can do it as many times as you want. We're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. 
And you might have also noticed that the last three start with the last two start on the same note that you finished the previous one. <laughs> okay, you'll notice that on your own. Anyway, do that over and over to get the hang of it. You'll notice that I tied over on beat one at the end. Now, once you get good at that, you'll notice that the left hand kind of does the same pattern. From the previous page, you finished right here with your thumb on G, and then you jump up and you play that same pattern, but you'll notice that the left hand for the first three stays on the same chord. It goes G chord, G chord, G chord. On the very last one, you get to move up. So it's a G chord, a G chord, and a G chord, and then on this one, the bottom note is B, so you'll end up here. So you have to move up from here to here. Okay, so let me play the left hand once, counting it, and you can see how that goes. It goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and then move up to three, four, one, and then, okay? Now I'm gonna put the hands together. After you've memorized the right hand, you've memorized the left, here's how they look together. I'll go really slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, and you can decide. I, I did a little bit of, con I connected the first one. You'll notice when I crossed over, I connected. You don't really have to do that. You can, you can lift as if you're breathing in between. Let me do that once without being so smooth so you can hear it. One, two, connect in between the jumps. So once you get that memorized, then you are ready to go ahead and, and, and do three perfect by memory, and then move on to the next two measures. And when I do these, I'm gonna go ahead and, and play all the way from here into the next part, just all the way up through the next measure. You already know these two lines. They're the same as the very first two lines of the piece. They're an exact repeat. So really, after today, you're gonna know the whole piece. But I'm gonna go ahead and play it, watch the fingering very carefully. You're already holding your thumb on G. You're gonna say one because it's tied and you'll come in on the and with this. This is a basic chromatic scale fingering. A chromatic scale is where you go half steps like this. And you'll notice that whenever you do half steps, you always alternate a one, three, one, three, one. And then if there's two white notes in a row, you stick in a number two. See that? And the one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three. So if you want to do a little practicing of a chromatic scale here, it would probably be a good idea. One, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two. Even going down will help you. Two, one, three, one, three, one, three, two, one, three, one, three, two, one, three, one, three, one, three, two, one, three, one, three, two, one, three, one, three, one, three, two. If you do that just a couple of times, it's gonna prepare you for this. Now this is just a short snippet of, a, of that scale that I just played, that chromatic scale. I'm gonna start on G sharp with my chromatic scale. Actually, I'm starting on G with my thumb, it's holding. And then G sharp is sort of the beginning of the scale. And it goes three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two. And then after this three, we're right where we need to be to lead into the next part. And then one and two and three. All right, so I'm going to do that one more time counting. I just wanted to show you how that little chromatic scale fingering works. Let's count this. Holding the G, you say one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. Okay, so work on that right hand. It won't have to be quite that fast, but work on it until you've got it memorized. It's not that tough. And then the left hand doesn't have a whole lot going on. You just finish this chord. Your pinky is on the B, and you're going to play that B on beat one and hold it until you get to beat two. So take note of what note the right hand is playing when your left hand lifts off. It's playing an A. So when you put them together, you're going to be going one. Oh, your right hand's holding already. One and two. Okay, I just want to make sure you lift off the left hand at the right time. Anyway, the left hand does that. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. All right, so the left hand's not doing a whole lot. I think you can get that memorized. Once you do, put them together. Um, right hand start, holding the G. Left hand's gonna play this to kick it off. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. 
And you'll notice if you want to, you could do this. You could make the, um, uh, the softness grow. You're going to start nice and soft, crescendo, and then all of a sudden, subito piano means suddenly you get soft. If you're starting already to think about what you're going to do musically, that's what you would do. Let me do that one more time. I kind of did it there, but not really. I'm going to show you better this time. One and two and three and four is getting bigger and bigger. Three and four and then one and two and three. All right, that's kind of the effect I think he was going for. Anyway, once you get that learned, three perfect by memory, try doing the whole thing one time with a stop. I'm going to go ahead and do it with a stop. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One stop. And then one. Even notice I do a little bit of stretching of the time here. Whenever you're not working with a metronome on this, you could do that. You could put a little bit of stretching time and then back to normal speed here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and play that again, but without the stop. Left hand thumb is going to be here, right hand, third finger. One, two, three. Once you have that memorized, you can go ahead and put it in with the rest of the piece. What I want to show you now, though, is what I was planning on doing um, with the uh, metronome this week to, to get you started after you've practiced the new material. And since the new material is actually pretty easy, you could probably start working with the metronome on it as well. But I want to show you how to do your review, and I put down 80 as kind of a starting tempo. So if we just uh, start at the very beginning and try to practice the first line, the way you should still be practicing it, with the metronome though, it would go like this. You'd do your right hand, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one. And then the left hand, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one. And then both hands would go like this, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one. Then you would practice the next part. Two measures. I'm at the very beginning here, the top of the first line. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one. And then the left hand would go like this. One and two and three and four and one, two, three and four and one. And then both hands. One and two. Once you get three perfect on that, put the whole line together with a stop. One and two and three. One and two and three. One. And then with the next part. One and two and three and four and one. Two, three and four and one. And then do the whole line. Three perfect. One and two with no stop. One and two. the first line. You do that to get three perfect. If you would like, you can start working up the dial. If you have the metronome like this, uh, like just a, a smartphone metronome, you can go up in tens. Otherwise, go two clicks up on your conventional metronome and you go to 88. So, you know, the next perfect could be like this. One and two and three. So I'm not going to do the whole thing in this video, but you get the idea. If you practice each line that you already know, each phrase, two measures, two measures, and four, or you could just do four at a time, but still do hands separately and start including your metronome, it's going to really start coming together for you, all right? By next lesson, you'll be playing the whole piece and maybe even, even be working with your metronome and getting it all nice and even. Good luck with that.